Welcome back to the channel ladies and gents. Today I am going to work on this shell fragment. Now it's a very broken piece, it's almost the butt end. But what I'm going to do on this one is rather than shape it in any particular fashion, I'm just going to try to retain the shape of the shell. You can see here this is fully dry and still got a crust on it, but you can see how much colour there is in parts of this shell. And we're going to hope to get that all over the face and end up with a weird, weird shape. Now we are going to lose a lot of these shell-like features, but because it's such a small fragment of a shell, I'm not overly stressed about that. And we're going to show the power of the sintered diamonds and the small nova burrs to get into really hard to reach places. So this is a piece that I would never put on a flat lap or a cabbing, cabbing wheel, but it's really where the uh, rotary tools, dremels, fordums, all of that, all of that can shine. So let's see if we can bring this to the surface and get a really weird shape, but a really beautiful, beautiful piece of opal. Alright, now here we are, I've kind of scrubbed through to where the colour is just starting to show through. You don't want to go too much further, I'm currently using this, which is a blue scented burr, and this is about 120 grit. So you would have seen that I was doing an initial shaping because there was this big chunk kind of hanging out off the top, and I wanted that gone. But the thing about the 120 or so grit, is that it will cause a lot of chipping. So you don't want to fully commit to shaping just with this. I always leave it all the way up until the final sintered diamond burr. So this was just doing a lot of the crude bits where I wasn't too worried about what was going to happen. And I'm pulling up just short of the color. You can see that there's a little bit of fog over it. This is still wet. So that little bit of fog is just a thin, thin coating basically of potch over the top of the raw color. So you want to pull up at about this point here. You don't want to work too much on edges that have a lot of color because it will cause chipping. Even if you're really, really delicate with it, you can see here that there's this micro chipping along the edge. 
You can feel it with your fingernail. So it's not too bad. It's coming along pretty well. There doesn't seem to be too many deep inclusions. There's still a little bit of sand in this little notch in here, but I'm going to get that out at a later stage. And yeah, the line of the shell here is probably the deepest inclusion and most of it is out, but I don't want to go too much further. Like I said, with this grit, it's a little bit coarse. So we're basically going to go through now to about a 240, give it a light buzz over just to get the color right to the surface. Then we're going to finish it off with the highest grit and then we'll probably leave it at that for now and I'll do a more detailed polishing. Once you get a shape that is so uneven and has so many nooks and crannies, it is going to take you a lot longer than just doing a straight up cab. If you're cabbing, you've got a nice even surface and you can fly through it, but something like this, it really takes you a while and it can take you a couple goes to get the polishing stage for each one right. You just basically dry it off and have a look. And yeah, we'll go into a lot of that Nova, Nova Point polishing side of things at a part two video. But for now, let's continue on just getting this color right to the surface and really get rid of these kind of inclusions and see what we've got. Okay, so this is the rubbed piece. It's still wet and you can see here we've gotten rid of that sand and there was an important technique that I'll explain in a little bit more detail. But first we'll just have a quick look. It looks pretty good. It's still slightly foggy, just the slightest hazy fog over the top because I want to take that off with the Nova Burrs, particularly the 280 and 600. And you can see here at the top here, the color kind of faded out and there's a bit of potch and an inclusion. But looking at it from up here, it's basically that entire section there. Shell, this always happens. There's this dead spot. So it's quite common. Quite common towards the apex of a curve that something like that turns up. We like to avoid it, but unfortunately, there's not much I can do about it. There was also some deeper inclusions here, which must have been where the uh, join in the two halves of the shell were. So we've dug those out. And yeah, we've dug pretty sharp in there. This will be interesting to polish and I'll show you a few techniques because of course, if I grab one of these smaller, smaller Nova Burrs, that is clearly not going to get in there. So I'll show you a cheap way of getting in there and getting that polished. 
but that will be in the next video. What I want to talk about is the way I was using this. So this is that pointier kind of one that I was using to get in here. You would have noticed that my grip was a little bit suspicious and you can see the remnants of it on my finger. See that black metal kind of grinding off and the glitter? So that is because on this cheap rotary tool, so it's only 50 bucks, the burrs are worth more than the actual tool that I use still. If you look really carefully, do you see that wobble? That tiny little jitter, and you can see it on the tip of this when I'm really zoomed in. You can see that it just kind of oscillates backwards and forwards when it's on. So to avoid that, I've learned not to put the bit in so deep, stick it out just a little bit extra, and when I'm carving, I actually stabilize it. If I push this against the edge of one of the, of the flex shaft, if I push it up like this, a bit exaggerated here, if I push it up, that will stabilize this and allow me to get straight in there. I don't like blaming my tools. I would much rather, much rather be able to somehow just compensate for one of their downfalls. I've noticed that this happens a lot less on some micro motors and Fordham flex shafts, but this is a $50, $50 rotary tool and flex shaft combo, so it's not going to be absolutely amazing. So a lot of the time you'll see whenever I'm doing something really fine or really careful and I can't afford for that wobble to start hammering the surface, Maybe sometimes it'll be off camera, but I'll be just touching here. And yeah, if I'm really zoomed in, it might be just off camera, but that's basically what I'm doing to stop that wobble. Sometimes I don't care about the wobble so much, because once you touch the surface, that wobble stops because of the pressure you're putting up against the stone. But when I'm coming in to get somewhere fine, this finger is always touching the shaft. The shaft of the bit. And just getting in there, keeping it stable, and we're all good. So this is it rubbed. It's actually dried in the time that I'm talking. So th this is it dry. And yeah, we've, we've got some great color. The Nova Burrs will get this really flashy and we'll give it a polish in the next video. So stay tuned for that one and I'll see you then. Catch you guys.